In this video, we're going to take a look at one dimensional arrays for our GCSE computer science. So, first things first, an array is a set of data that are all of the same data type. So, it'll all be of type integer, or of type string, or of type char, whatever the data type is, they all need to be the same. So, you couldn't have an array that said Jim 37 exclamation mark 42.3 because that wouldn't work, because they are different data types. Now once you have created an array, its length is fixed. So if you say you want an array with 50 places, it can only store 50 things. Now the array is said to have an upper bound and a lower bound. So the upper bound is the highest index value, and the lower bound is the lowest index value. Now each piece of data in the array, so in this case Jim, Dave, Rob, Ash and Reese, is called the element, and when we store the element, we also store its position, which is called the index. Now, arrays, they start from zero. So the first thing in an array is technically the zeroth thing. And in my array here, it is Jim. The first index, so index of one is Dave, index of two is Rob. So even though we've got five things, technically the index only goes up to four. Now to access arrays, we can either individually access each element of the array by going to its index, so output names array 3 would um, output the 0, 1, 2, 3, so that would be the fourth thing in the array. And we can also use loops to traverse a whole array as well. So say we've got an array that's got six names in, we do 4 i equals 0 to 5, because remember we're starting at 0, so we always go one less. Output names array i would output all six of those names. Now, if we're not sure how big an array is going to be, so it might be that we create an array, but maybe the user types in an input that declares how big the array is going to be, so we're not sure what it's going to be every time, so we can't say from 0 to 5. What we can do is do 4 i equals 0 to the name of the array dot length, or length of name array. It doesn't really matter too much in pseudocode, but names array dot length, that's quite a sort of common way in programming you would access the length of something and then I'll put names array i as normal. So let's say we've got an array called names and I output names one, that would output the name div. Now similarly, if I do a for loop, it would output each name individually. So it goes to output zero, puts uh, Jim, then index one does Dave, index two outputs Rob, index three Ash, and index four Reese. And that's how your for loop would work in that instance. So that's how we can go and name everything inside a particular array. So how we write it in pseudocode is we declare an identifier, so the name of the array. We then say that it's an array by doing colon array and then we set a lower bound and the upper bound and then say which data type it's going to be. So it might be uh, declare names array colon array zero colon ten or string or whatever. Then to output values we can um, output the name of the array and then in normal brackets we put which index we want so index 0, index 10, whatever it is. If we want to input a value into the array we could say the name of the array, which index of that array and then our input and the other way around. And we can also change values inside an array so what we can say here is say the array is called A, we can say right we're going to change the first value to be whatever is already in the um, index of 4 in this array. So it would replace A0 with whatever's in A4. So here's an example of some pseudocode. So we've got declare array of names. It's an array, so it's got uh, of the uh, lower bound is 0 and the upper bound is 4 of strings. So we've got five names in there. And um, then we're saying the first value is going to be an input, and then we're going to output the last value, the fifth value of the array. Now we can also use groups of one dimensional arrays as well. So here we've got three separate things. Now we can use these together by having three separate single one dimensional arrays. So we've got uh, the student ID, so we've got 1001, 1002, 1003, or indexes of 0, 1, 2. We've got the same for the last names and their computing grades. Now we can combine these together and we could output, for example, uh, student ID 1003, his last name is Jones, and their computing grade was B in one line of code, which we'll see later on in the video. Another example of a, a larger program, so we've got 
three arrays here. So we've got uh, student ID, surname, and C grades. We then input it to values, and then we've outputted all of the um, indexes of zero together, and we'll do all the indexes of one together, and all the indexes of two together. So it groups that data together. Now, when you're creating a program that has lots of single dimensional arrays that were um, combined together, it's really important that we don't start um, swapping values around and moving things because if those indexes get out of sync, then when you try and group them together, it won't work. So here's some example past paper questions. Now, these aren't all the particular ones you can get. These are just some that I've managed to find. So you might get told that you need to declare an array for running times in a race of 100 students. So you'd have to write down a line of pseudocode that would do that, probably linked to your pre-release material. You may get asked to change the declaration. So it can only hold records for a sample of 50 students instead of 100. So showing that you can create a variable and then change it to your needs. And then last question, explain why an array is an effective data structure for storing these running time records. So pause the video for a second and see if you can answer those three questions. Okay, so hopefully you've paused and you've an answer and we'll, want to, and we'll go on to the answers from me. So somewhat along the lines of declare running times, array 0 to 99 of float. I'm not too bothered about the data type here. I didn't specify, so you wouldn't lose marks for that, but if it's a running time, it's probably going to be a decimal number. Or you could have declare running times array 1 to 100. Either works. I usually go with the 0 to 99 just because I'm used to sticking things on zero, but it's entirely up to you. And it depends on the programming language if you go ahead and create this as a natural program. Then to change that to 50 values, we declare running times array 0 to 49 or 1 to 50. And we use arrays because we can store multiple times under one identifier. We can reduce the number of variables instead of having time 1, time 2, time 3, time 50. We can also use iterations to loop through an array. And the program is easier to debug because we've only got one sort of data structure we need to look at. Now, what I'd like to do is create for me an algorithm that solves the following problem. So it needs to display a list of products. The user then inputs the prices for each product. The program then outputs each product with its price. So you can see on the screen, I've got an example of how your program should roughly work. So pause the video, use Notepad or Word or a piece of paper, I'm bothered, and see if you can go ahead and create this program for me. And now for some answers. So for the solution, I'm going to, firstly, I need to declare my two arrays. So I've got product array, which is array of six items. Just, it could have been any number, I just picked six. So zero to five and price array of integer. Now I'm going to create a for loop. So I equals zero to five, which is going to say enter the price of, and then each product that's in the array. We're then going to input the price array and then output the whole array again, but with product array i and price array i, so it prints the product and the price together. Now you could have also have um, redeclared the variable product array as well, added in the items. I've just gone and presumed you've done that already, or presumed it was already filled. But if you did want to do something like that, you would have to um, maybe here you could just set and say uh, element zero is PS4, Nintendo Switch and so on. Right, hopefully you enjoyed the video, hopefully it made sense, you understood arrays, and I will see you in the next video. Please don't forget to subscribe, add a comment, and give the video a like. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.